welcome back to Realism Overhaul. Today we have plenty of launches to go through. This is working our way towards having a probe orbit the moon eventually. To kick off today's episode, we start in the second quarter of 1964, launching up what's called the S3S. And these rockets were intended to get reliability data on the twin, uh, I think LR87 or LR70 something, 80 something booster. I forgive me, I don't remember the name. Uh, because the reliability for that engine was terribly low, and the Sparrow rocket I designed to orbit the moon used that booster. So we needed to do some flights of that engine before I trusted it enough to do it on a more expensive rocket such as something capable of orbiting the moon. But in order to make these missions mean a little bit more than just collecting data, I decided to put some science payload and solar panels on there, the very, very poor level zero solar panels, and try to put it in high orbit above the Earth, which is above geostationary. This first attempt here, I neglected to make sure center of mass was, well, centered and caused us to spin a little bit out of control, as well as using pretty much all of our RCS trying to arrest the control, and it just wasn't a good time. Not only is it set up, so I don't think the batteries will last very long because of that spin, but also we only spend about one fifth of the time in actual high space, so the science collection wasn't that great. Uh, due to this, and the fact that I think I planned on launching this rocket two times regardless to get the reliability data up, we launched up another one, this time with correct center of mass, intended on reaching that high space above Earth like mentioned previously. And luckily, this launch was able to do that successfully. So not only do we have some experiments in high space above Earth running right now, we also have reliability on that twin booster up, which means I'm feeling a little bit better about Sp uh, Sparrow 4's launch. This is the orbits of those two satellites, the yellow one of course being the one I uh, neglected to center the center of mass on. Nonetheless, we push forward because Sparrow 4 is on the launch pad ready to launch. Consequently, this is the final Sparrow of this I guess, Sparrow series of rockets. We're gonna be moving on to some better things. So we've got six casters strapped onto the side and the twin booster pushing us up into space. Uh, this is going to be the exact same, pretty much payload. I believe I don't didn't make any changes to it. So we've got a solid rocket motor on the payload itself, which sort of limits us to be honest. It's not the most efficient design. I think I chose it because I wanted to see what I could do with it. But you know, it's got a limited amount of Delta V because you can't shut it down. So I guess limited isn't the right word. It's got a set amount of Delta V. And for planning purposes, it makes it easy and it also makes it, well, a little bit more difficult because you really have to time things perfectly. We are pushing Sparrow 4 into orbit of the Earth, and I believe on the back here is our mid-series AJ-10, able to relight uh, as many times as I'd like it to. So we're pushing ourselves into orbit, and then we are going to do a translunar injection, which we ended up doing. Uh, despite the footage here, we did not do that on the same burn. I think we orbited the Earth one or two times before we actually put ourselves on translunar injection but eventually we were able to do it. And this is me testing with the Delta V we have in the payload, how to get orbit, which really wouldn't be much of a problem. Unfortunately, what I completely neglected to realize is this trajectory is actually just going to impact the Earth. And it's my own fault for not realizing this. As if you go back into the footage and take a look, you can see the trajectory clearly going straight through the middle of the Earth. So this brings an end to our Sparrow program, and we are going to be building some new rockets, uh, which will eventually lead to another lunar orbit attempt, or a few. Uh, this first rocket here is the Raven 1, 
Um, our first step into getting things to go to the moon a bit easier is communications in low Earth orbit. As it is right now, we have absolutely no commsat, so there are some, well, not ideal blackout spots that can affect our trajectory to places like the moon and will definitely affect our um, trajectories going to other planets as well. Because if uh, our maneuver is in a place where we have blackout, we simply just lose that maneuver and sometimes you only have one shot. So this first rocket is simply um, testing the rocket itself. This, and also I was testing that antenna as well. I'm rather new to real antennas and trying to figure out what ones can relay and what ones cannot. Consequently, despite how this one looks, it cannot relay. And of course, it's a crazy design with the center of mass not centered. Um, but also, this is completing a ComSat contract, so we are getting paid for this. You can see how we're really fighting there, but luckily, we did this well enough. I figured because this antenna was a, a relay dish, I, I thought that it would relay. However, it did not. So that let us know for our next launches of a ComSat payload that we would need to use a different antenna. Now the footage on the screen right here is the plethora of issues I had with starting this Raven program. Um, I accidentally had a staging error, which had the engines just pretty much static fire, and then several times brought it back to the KCT to edit, and accidentally, you know, forgot to switch out the engines, so when we brought it back, the engines were still firing upon vessel load, and that happened like three times, believe it or not. It was an interesting stream, to say the least. And then one of the times we had a successful launch, but our second stage engine failed. And then finally we had another attempt at sending a probe to the moon, but instead something was wonky with our solar panel setup and our electric charge not being quite enough. And the probe died halfway to the moon. And this led us to, uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. I don't remember how many times here. One, two, three, four? The fourth attempt? Maybe the fifth? I think it's the fifth attempt of Raven 3 uh, launching a lunar probe to orbit the moon. Uh, this one we launched successfully. The mission is nominal so far. Uh, we're feeling good about this design. Now, the reason we switched over to Raven instead of Sparrow is because I wanted to design a new rocket with this sort of half stage in mind. So we've got one sustainer engine as well as two boosters on the side that about two minutes and 20 seconds of the flight, right here, we cut the engines and decouple the side uh, engines and this main sustainer continues to fire to bring us up into space further. And then we'll stage off to our second stage uh, a vacuum engine that will push us, I think, close to, if not all the way to orbit for the rest of the stages to, of course, burn us on our translunar injection to orbit the moon. Now, if you guys have seen the latest video uploaded on this channel, it was an introduction teaser to a collaborative RP1 series between myself and Beardy Penguin called For All Kerbal Kind. And we're looking to get started on that very soon. But don't worry, this series will continue as is, at least for now. I don't plan on just dumping it for the new one. But we'll see how far either one gets. I'm very excited for the future. For any details you'd like to find on that before we get started on it, check the Discord in the description below successfully placed in orbit, we are now ready to burn for a translunar injection. And because of the before mentioned connection issues in low earth orbit, we didn't have connection at our maneuver, but we're, we did have connection three minutes later. So we were three minutes late for the burn, which caused a little bit of inefficiency, leading to the fact that this first capture maneuver wasn't enough to capture into orbit. We used all the fuel we possibly could and it brought us onto a trajectory that within just a 
or not within, but just a little bit over a month would bring us back to the moon, but still not in orbit. Um, and at that point in time, the plan was to try to use the RCS to capture us into orbit of the moon. And we used pretty much all of the RCS on this craft to bring us into a captured orbit. Now, unfortunately, this orbit was not very stable. We have science experiments on here that take about 90 days to complete. And this specific trajectory, we take a look at it here, yeah, has a predicted impact in about 46 days because, well, gravity is wonky. So this does complete our contract and it is technically in orbit of the moon. It's not the most efficient for gathering science. It'll only get half as much. But this is a successful capture nonetheless. Next episode, we will be putting up a communications relay network for sure. Well, thank you guys so much for watching, and peace out. Who would it